Today, we're talking about biochar, what it is, how to make it, and how it benefits the garden. Welcome back to Better Terra. I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to talk about biochar. Let's get started by talking about what is biochar. Biochar is charcoal, simple. Why is charcoal used as this biochar? Well, in the name, the char, the charcoal, the bio, what, what's, what's bio about charcoal? Nothing. Um, so let, let's talk about that. Why, if you've watched other videos on biochar, um, some of the videos put this right into the garden. Does, does that have any benefit to the garden? No, none. Actually, it can be bad for the garden. So charcoal inherently is absorbent. It's used to absorb smells. It's used to absorb toxins out of the body sometimes. Um, obviously we use it on our, our summer barbecue grills, but with it being absorbent, if we put this in the garden as is, it's going to absorb moisture and nutrient from around it. And that's not what we want. We don't want it to hold on to nutrient. We want it to release nutrient. So for our biochar, we're gonna take the charcoal and we're going to load it with nutrient. And stick around for the video because we'll get to all of that what we're gonna use for nutrient, uh, how we're going to process this to be ready for the garden. So now that we have a little bit of understanding of what is biochar, it's charcoal loaded with some kind of bionutrient. And how do we get to making it? Well, step one, get charcoal. We've got that done. Got a bucket of it here. We can't just put this large piece in the garden and hope for it to be successful. We need to break this up into much, much smaller pieces, almost the smallest piece that we can think of. And if we were gonna sit here and break this up by hand, it would take us forever. We still wouldn't be able to get it as small as we want. Some of the uh, processes that I've seen online are uh, folks taking it in a bucket and then smashing it with a sledgehammer. Um, I don't see that being very successful for the bucket in the long run with it cracking out the bottom. I wanna do kind of a DIY biochar crusher. So let me set this down and I'll show you where I wanna start. And I wanna start with this heavy tamper that I have. Uh, this tamper has got a lot of weight to it um, it's approximately 10 by 10 inches. This won't fit in a bucket. So using some scrap lumber, I think I'm going to build a box that's slightly larger than the tamper uh, with a little bit of depth so we can hold uh, not a whole bucket at a time, but small manageable portions. And then we can really down in the bucket, smash it down into very small pieces, empty the bucket into a container and then do a few uh, different batches. So that's the DIY biochar part. Getting charcoal from a source, you can make it yourself uh, in a fire pit, or you can buy it uh, in a bagged form in your grilling section of your favorite store. The cheaper, the better. There's nothing fancy about the charcoal, just as long as it's charred wood. So we, have the what is biochar, how to make biochar generally, and we're gonna get around to that. But let's talk about a little bit about why it has benefit in the garden. So it being able to hold onto a bionutrient, and the charcoal is wood, it's going to break down over time slowly, uh, and as it breaks down, it's going to release some of that bionutrient that it's holding on to. 
it's going to help with compaction in the garden because it's a light uh, material. It's going to help with moisture retention because it is absorbent. Kind of the same thing that a perlite has in the garden and some vermiculite properties. So the benefits that it gives the garden is moisture retention, compaction maintenance, um, the release of bio-nutrient over time. And as it exists in the garden, and it's, it's going to give and take nutrients. So it's going to be kind of a nutrient uh, piggy bank for the, for the garden space. So with our biochar, we're going to do a little bit of experimentation and we'll do updates over the season. Um, in the garden in the back, we have our five garden beds. And I think that I have enough charcoal to start with to put it into one or two of our beds. And we'll check in over time to see if we see any uh, explosive benefits in those specific areas. I apologize if we got a little bit of a wind noise. I'm set up on the side of the house where I'm not normally at to hide from the wind today. And I've got my tiny dead cat here on to muffle some of the wind. So if we get some wind noise, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can here to, uh, to minimize it. So since we have our biochar overview, let's get down to building our box. So let me start by getting the tamper up here and just kind of eyeballing some measurement. We're not gonna try to make this thing um, the best biochar crusher on the block uh, because I already know it's gonna be the only one on the block. Tamper is 10 inches. And I think if we give us ourselves two inches on either side at 14 inch square, that'll be a good area to work with the tamper, uh, have some room to um, work it up and down and really crush up those pieces. So I'm going to start uh, going and cutting some of the scrap wood to meet these dimensions. Stay with me. All right. Took my scrap wood, went in the garage, and cut up my pieces. Did some quick measurements. This is going to be a fast and dirty build. So I'll uh, speed through this and at the end I'll talk about what we put together and then I'll put all the measurements and uh, plans in the description. So stick with me. I'm going to throw this together real quick. All right, there we have it. A box for smashing stuff. And I think it's gonna be uh, rather, uh, rather able to stand up to the test. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh. I think it's gonna last a while. So let's, uh, let's start making our biochar. Let me reposition the camera so we can see down in the box a little bit better. Let's start smashing some stuff. Okay, let's start by emptying in some of the charcoal. That's about half. And let's start smashing. It's very dusty. So standing upwind or wearing a mask would probably be a good idea. Let's give it a, a little bit of a mix. So some immediate improvements that I see that could be done. 
because it's definitely making it smaller. For sure. We still have pieces like this, but we have many pieces like this. Is the flatness on the bottom of the tamper. If it had some, if it had some variation, ridges or something. But then I would, whoop, geez. Then I would be uh, defacing my tamper and wouldn't be able to use it as a tamper later on. <coughs> so I'm gonna dump this batch into this tote. And I'll show you what's gonna happen in the tote later. You can see some of the pieces that made it through the bottom of the of the box. Maybe we'll try doing less this time. Maybe we'll have a better better outcome with the bigger pieces. Oh, I think that might be might be a thing. Working in smaller batches. Yeah, working in smaller batches, I think, is the is the secret to success here. So I'll go ahead and finish this rest up. We'll get back to the secret of the bio load. I don't know how it's going to be for the lawn, though. <laughs> All right, let's talk about what we're going to use to load the charcoal with is our bio-nutrient. So down here is our tub of charcoal. And here in this bucket, we've been making compost tea. So this compost was everything from the garden in the house last fall. We put about three shovelfuls in the cheesecloth here last night with approximately um, half a cup of raw molasses. And what that does, oh, I'm going to put this down in the charcoal, let it drain. What the molasses does is it reinvigorate, <laughs> what the molasses does is it helps reinvigorate the microbes that were in the compost. So if you can see the color of the tea, it's beautiful. It looks like tea. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this nutrient rich compost tea and we're going to put it in with the charcoal and allow it to absorb. And we're going to let that sit overnight probably. With the compost that's inside the cheesecloth, we're going to wring that out and we're just going to return it back to the composter. To some people, this might just look like muddy water. But to folks in the know, we know that that is as good as it gets. So we're going to put our tea in. Just enough to cover. Then I get myself a stirring stick. All right, I'm back with my stirring stick. I'm gonna give it all a big, a big mix.
And just in that couple of minutes, it took me to go find this stirring stick, a broken broom handle. It's already absorbed quite a bit of that. I'm going to add a little bit more compost tea. And call it good. So what now? There's still maybe some big pieces in there that I'll take out uh, as we're adding it to the garden. Okay, so what now? We have our biochar that's being loaded with our bionutrient compost tea. So after about a day of it soaking and bringing in all that nutrient, then we're going to add it to the garden soil and then give it a till so it's incorporated in the top um, several inches of the garden bed. The question may be, do you have to use compost tea? And the answer is no. You could use liquid fish emulsion. You could use basically any type of liquid nutrient or liquid fertilizer that's safe for the garden. Anything that that bio char in the making can pull in and hold within its structure. So um, as far as the compost tea, I still have, I don't know, about a gallon left. I'm going to, uh, add that to the plants we already have started in the garden. Compost tea is something that you can do repeatedly throughout the season right on your plant. You are completely safe uh, adding it right to the plant. The concentration won't burn, um, will not harm your plants at all. So today we talked about what is biochar, how to make it, how it benefits the garden. We did a little DIY project for making a smasher box that thing is uh, definitely robust. I need to remember, lift with my legs whenever I pick that thing up. Uh, it does the trick. Uh, maybe needs some modification on what we're using to uh, smash the charcoal with, but that's for another day. And we talked a little bit about compost tea and um, its benefits to biochar and to the garden. Once we get this added into the garden, We'll do a periodic up update throughout other episodes where we're in the garden and see what effects it's having on that garden space. If you stayed with me throughout this whole video, thank you. If you're a subscriber, that is awesome. And we thank you very much for that. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button right down below. If you think this episode is something that you can use this season or pass on to somebody, click that like button. That tells YouTube that we're doing a good job. Thanks for watching and come on back next time as we keep on working toward a better Terra one project at a time. <laughs>